member of the Presbyterian Church of Marion and Marion Center, PA. Occasionally, when our pastor takes time off, I have the privilege of serving our church, and today I am pleased to be the messenger of our message today. And before we get started, let us have a word of prayer. God, we thank you for the time that you have given us, the time to get together and study your word, a time to restore ourselves and to rest a bit, a time to take what we've learned and pass it on to our neighbors. God, we ask now that you quiet our minds and quiet our hearts and open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to your word that we are hearing today that is being proclaimed for you, Lord, in your glory. This we ask in your name. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Psalms 23 and John chapter 10, verses 9 through 15. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valleys, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And John chapter 10, verses 9 through 15. <clears throat> I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lies down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks and the flock and scatters. The man ran, runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father. I lay down my life for the sheep. The word of God for the people of God. Now Psalms 23 became a popular verse in the 20th century to be read at funerals. This scripture was written for comfort and confidence in God. These words stood true back then and they still stand true today. No matter where we may be in our lives, these words provide comfort and security to us. Psalms 23 not only gives us a sense of comfort, it glorifies God, giving him praises and thanksgiving for providing to us our basic needs and protections. I recently read a book written by W. Philip Keller titled, a shepherd looks at Psalms 23. Mr. Keller was a shepherd, and his writing compares the shepherd's love and care of his sheep to the loving care that God provides to us. And it also shows the ways that the sheep respond to their shepherd and rely on him just as we do our shepherd. I did not realize how much we have in common with sheep until I read this book. Mr. Keller begins his writings by stating that the sheep are one of the most neediest farm animals that there are. That statement alone points directly to us, in my opinion. We are pretty needy. Without God in our lives, we roam around in the darkness, looking in all the wrong places for love, happiness, and contentment. 
And it is not until we really give ourselves to God and put our very being in his hands that we are able to find these things. The happiness and contentment that gives us peace beyond comprehension. Our shepherd, our Lord, is with us 24 hours a day, every day. Just like the shepherd of a herd of sheep, he is with his flock 24-7. He knows each and every one of his sheep by name and by character. He even knows the ones who require a little more watching over than others, which I think some of us may fall in that category for God too. Without guidance, they would eat and trot in the same area until the grass has been killed and the ground has been rutted and left in complete ruin. They do not know to seek clean water. They will drink from mud holes filled with menorah and disease. They foolishly will walk off a cliff as they spy a fresh patch of grass to graze on. How often do we find ourselves in the rut of life, prodding in circles, and not really getting anywhere? It is not till we look to God for guidance that we are pulled from our self-destructive ways and moved into the directions that God has planned for us. We often find ourselves drinking from dead waters. These waters are not providing us with the substance that we need to open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit. It is the living waters that we seek, but cannot find when our eyes and minds are not open. Just as the sheep will walk off a cliff, we too foolishly roam and wander and walk off cliffs in our lives. And we sometimes partake in what we feel is best for us. And just like the sheep, without our shepherd to bring us back, we are broken and lost. Sheep will fight among themselves for dominancy and headbutt others out of the way just to be first. Mr. Keller writes how fiercely they will fight until they notice that he is among them. And then they calm down. They seem to be a little more content. They're able to be quiet and rest. How often do we find ourselves doing the very same thing, pushing and shoving to get what we want, not thinking how we may be hurting others? How much more content are we within our circumstances when we finally wake up? And we know God is with us. We now are calm and content and we can rest. Another interesting fact that he shared about sheep was how they live in fear. He stated that sheep fear the very existence that they live in. And one slight movement of something unexpected will send them all running. How many of us have been there done that? Fear can rule our lives. Fear can darn right just paralyze us. But when we have God walking beside us, we are able to overcome the fear that we live with. The sheep will often seek soft, comfy spots to lie down in in the pasture. But this can lead to death for them. Although they look all fluffy and cozy with all that wool, that fluffiness usually is a little bit more than the wool, if you know what I mean. And their weight will cause them to roll over onto their backs and they're not able to roll back over to get up. They quickly will fill up with gas, which stops their breathing, and they start to lose circulation. And it is the shepherd who has to come over and roll them over and get them standing up and restore their circulation so that they will survive. Just like sheep, we too find comfort in places that eventually will do us in. It may seem harmless at first, but gradually we end up in places that we cannot always recover from. And it takes our good shepherd 
to bring us back and restore us. Now, sheep are pretty needy from what we've read and what we've heard, but we too are just as needy and require just as much care as the sheep do. We need to be watched over every moment of our lives to be protected and guided in the direction of righteousness. But just as God continues to care for us and our needs throughout the seasons of our lives, so does the shepherd with his sheep. He does not just stop there to be there to comfort them. He also gets them to greener pastures. In the spring, before he leads his sheep up to the highlands for rich, nourishing grasses, the shepherd prepares the pastures by pulling the poisonous plants and clearing the watering holes of debris so that they may fill with fresh, clean water from the mountain runoff. Once this is done, he will return to his flock at the farm, and he will lead them through the valleys to the highlands. The path through the valleys are riddled with all kinds of dangers, hanging rocks, dens of coyotes, flooding creeks, poisonous grasses, and snakes. The shepherd carefully leads his sheep through these dark valleys and protects them from the dangers they face on the journey to the highlands. He uses his rod to chase off predators and his staff to pull the straying sheep back to him. Once they make it to the grazing lands on the high mountaintops, the shepherd keeps the close eye on his sheep protecting them from nasal flies that will enter through their nostrils into the brain and lay eggs, which is very painful to the sheep and sometimes deadly, as they will pound their heads on stones and trees to get relief. And then there are scabs. The scabs is an irritating and highly contagious disease and is passed from one sheep to another by the rubbing of their heads. That's what sheep like to do best. They like to greet each other by rubbing their heads. But the nasal flies and the scabs just makes it so miserable for the sheep. Although they know no better, their shepherd does. And the shepherd controls these things by applying oil to their noses and to their heads. And this will keep the flies and the scabs from spreading. The sheep are cared for, protected, and comforted by their shepherd, just as we are by our shepherd. God cares for our every need so that we do not want for anything. Just like he provided for the Israelites during the exile, he provides for us food, water, and comfort. Just like the shepherd of the sheep, our shepherd is with us 24-7. He cares for and protects us every day of our lives, and he does us out of love. He loves us more than we will ever know. He provides us with a day of rest, a time to rest our minds and our souls and to feast on his word and his living water. He gives us places to lie down and to be still and to listen for him. This will restore our souls, and when we are refreshed, we will be encouraged to walk on the path of his righteousness. Even though we may wander off into a path of discouragement, temptations, or trials and tribulations, he is beside us every step of the way, bringing us closer to him. We do not need to fear the evil forces around us as we walk through the dark valleys. He is our light, and he gives us guidance to follow his path of righteousness. He comforts us by his very presence within us. When we stray, he brings us back to him over and over again, saving us from the trials and tribulations by turning them into spiritual growth for us, pulling us closer to him through the Holy Spirit restoring our souls with his love and comfort. 
just as the shepherd of the sheep prepares the highlands for the sheep to graze. God prepared a table for us. In the very presence of his enemies, he walked through the valley of death himself to prepare a table like no other for all of us to feast on, the table of God for the people of God. Jesus' body broken and his blood shed for us for forgiveness of our sins so that we may have everlasting life. The table of God prepared for us not because we deserve it, but because God loves us beyond any comprehension. God's table is prepared to satisfy our hunger and thirst for acceptance, unconditional love, comfort, and hope beyond all hope. The only place we will find this light and this peace beyond all peace and love beyond all understanding is within God. His table prepared for us, a table that is ours to partake of by accepting and believing in his only begotten son. Just as the shepherd protects the minds and the lives of his sheep with oil, our shepherd anoints our heads with the oil of the Holy Spirit to protect our thoughts from the evil around us. Mr. Keller wrote in his book the following statement on the Holy Spirit anointing our minds. This is what he wrote. It is the daily anointing of God's gracious spirit upon my mind, which produces in my life such personality traits as joy, contentment, love, patience, gentleness, and peace. What a contrast this is to the tempers, frustrations, and irritableness which mar the daily contact, conduct of so many of God's children. The Holy Spirit anointing our minds, taking away the tempers, the frustrations, and the irritableness, and replacing it with joy, contentment, love, peace, and gentleness. Those are words that we really could ponder on and think about and a prayer that we could ask God to remove those bad thoughts and remove those frustrations from our mind and concentrate on what our gifts are from the Holy Spirit. How com comforting is it to know that the Holy Spirit is within us as a gift from God through Jesus Christ, filling us with his love and contentment and patience and peace, protecting our minds from the temptations of the earthly things surrounding us. What a gracious gift given to us out of pure love. When we are anointed by the Holy Spirit, we are given a gift above all gifts. We are giving a gift of love and peace. We are overflowing with these gifts. And these are the gifts given to us from God through the Holy Spirit, through Jesus. Jesus' cup overflowed with grace and mercy to give us life, everlasting life in the kingdom of God. Jesus gave it all for us. Are we returning our faithfulness and love for him? Will we follow him all the days of our lives, just as the sheep will follow their shepherd? God longs for us to be his followers, to love him just as he loves us. Can we joyfully love God with all of our minds, our hearts, and our souls, and let that love that is within us flow to those around us? Love our neighbors near and far. Love our neighbors even though we may not be loved back. We too need to let our cup overflow with grace and mercy to those around us. 
as we do this, we will develop an understanding, an understanding that we may not have understood before of this love that God talks about. When our cup overflows, we then can look forward to the promises of God to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The gate is waiting for us to enter, the gate of the Lord who gave it all so we may have it all. Jesus tells us in John chapter 10 verse 9 that I am the gate and whoever enters through me will be saved. Jesus, the shepherd above all shepherds, the keeper of the gate, his arms open wide welcoming us in. Through him we shall not perish but have everlasting life. The Lord is our shepherd that we shall not want. He is our provider, protector, and leader. He provides us with comfort and peace beyond our own understanding. Our shepherd loves us with all of his heart, mind, and soul. In return, he wants us to love him back with all of our hearts, minds, and souls, and to follow him and glorify him so that we may dwell in his house forever. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Shepherd of our lives, we thank you for watching over us every hour of the day. We thank you for your guidance and leadership. We take great comfort in knowing that you will walk beside us when we go through the darkest valleys and anoint our minds with your oil of compassion, love, and joy. Help us to know your comforting presence is always with us. We know that in you there is nothing to be afraid of. Help us to stand for love, peace, and justice. We know that you have prepared the table before us, that you love us deeply, and desire us to be your sheep forever. Help us in this world to do justice, to love and be kind, and to walk humbly with you wherever we may go. May we follow your path and be welcomed into your kingdom of everlasting life. And now, God, we come before you with the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, as we go on with our lives, and try to make some kind of normalcy out of what we're going through now with the COVID-19 pandemic. May we be always grateful to God, always giving thanksgiving, and always showing our love. And may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace be with you.